uh, we're talking about building faith at home. And of course, that's going to look different, somewhat different for all of us because we're in different family life seasons, aren't we? And so we'd like to get a sense of the family life seasons represented here and also help embed in your mind, okay, what are the ears through which I'm listening to today's message? If you have teenagers in your household, we're in this category, would you raise your hand? Ooh. Before you put them down, someone near them, just put a hand on them right now. We're going to pray. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually a fun season. It's just a little more challenging. Uh, children 12 and under, we're in that category also. If you have children 12 and under, let's see your hands. Now, if anyone here has currently, or ever in your life, has had parents, could you raise your hand? <laughs> I just want to get a sense that everyone's covered, we're all connected. Which is actually an important statement because the faith experience we had growing up has a profound influence on our experience of the faith today, but also what we do for the next generation. We've heard the statistics. Uh, perhaps you're aware of some of the lower estimates that are telling us children raised in Christian families in our generation when they go off to college, are walking away from the faith at an alarming rate. And some people are saying, well, what's the church doing wrong? And yet, the church has never invested more time, energy, creativity into expressing the gospel in ways that are powerful and impactful. These four flowers would represent my four children. I want nothing in life more than for my children to embrace my faith and my beliefs and for those roots to grow deep. And so I want them to be exposed to the gospel. And so I bring them to the church, which will be represented by this watering pot. And the church, of course, has the living water of the gospel that they teach my children. And I bring them over and over, and they hear the gospel. But for some reason, it doesn't seem to be, sorry, <laughs> taking root. So not to insult our intelligence, we all know what the problem is, don't we? They just need to go to a bigger church is what needs to happen. <laughs> They need to go to a church that has all kinds of great facilities and programs and maybe even a really cool-looking student pastor or something like that. <laughs> no, it's not happening. It's not God's design. What's God's design? God's design is called the home, the rich soil of the home where faith is nurtured and the roots can grow deep because the gospel is poured into that context and it's lived on a day-in and day-out basis. It's faith at home that's the critical issue. Well, the legacy that I received was very negative. I had an alcoholic father who um, was uh, drunk and would come home, and he was abusive with my mom. I remember coming home another time and literally finding my mom on top of my brother. They had been in a fist fight. He was tr she was trying to get him to calm down about something, and he couldn't. And so emotionally, it was like I didn't want to go there. Matter of fact, I went all to the neighbor's house and said, can I play here, please? You know, because we were the house that if you lived in our neighborhood, you would tell your kids, okay, you can play at any house but not that one <laughs> because you didn't know what was happening at that house there was no boundaries no father and then spiritually my spiritual legacy my mom became um, very angry and hard toward God she thought okay he's punishing me I must have done something wrong and that's why I have this very hard life and so she taught me that that God was a big mean man in the sky who basically you know if you didn't live perfectly he was gonna hit you on the wrist and say you know bad girl and and so it was taught to me spiritually I thought God was distant and he didn't love me. I didn't have an example of how you incorporate faith in the home. Olivia came from the background she described and so we came to a point where we recognized, boy, we've got to think through how we're going to do this intentionally. Now before we do this, do not walk out of the church today and say, okay, I've got to do these 77 ideas this week with my family, all right? We do not want you to do that. We are giving you like 10 years worth of our ideas and others. And so what we want you to do is, is listen, go, okay, what would work for me? What could I incorporate in my home during the time that I'm already doing that I can fit to pass my faith on to my children? In fact, already doing is critical. The scriptures, again, they talk about when you lie down, when you get up, it's the everydayness of life. So let's start out with bedtime. I don't know why it is, but right when you're saying goodnight, honey, is when they go, mom, 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 and they have like 20 questions to ask you. And sometimes they're very serious. Why does God do this? And what happened about this? But I think what happens is the quieting of their spirit. They finally are resting and they can think. And so I thought to myself, first of all, it was driving me crazy because I was thinking, I have got dishes to do. I got to go to bed. So how can I um, take advantage of this but not wear myself out? So when they were little, I said, all right, this is what we're going to do. You have me on Tuesday night, and you have me on Wednesday night. And after I get you guys settled... And I wondered when was my night. <laughs> after I get you guys settled, then I'm going I'm to give you 15 minutes. 
And they're like, really? Yes, I'm going to lay with you, or I'm going to sit by your bed. You can ask me whatever you want, and you get me for 15 minutes solid. And then the other one has another night. Now, the great part was, if I tried to get out of it, guess what they did? No, Mom, it's Tuesday night. This is my night. And so it really held me accountable to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with them. We were already going to bed. And then what was great is on Friday night, I could say, good night, honey, it's not your night tonight. Well, one Easter, we decided, okay, tonight we're going to do this at home. And um, Kurt just thought, I'm going to go out and get some wood. And he came home, and we made a cross. And we talked to them about what the cross was, and we read some scriptures. And they loved to use a hammer and a nail, so that was really fun. And we'd, but we made it fun, and then we talked about it. And then at the end, we all took a piece of paper and wrote down the sins that we knew we had dealt with that week or that year or whatever. And we talked about, you know what, we're going to nail those sins to the cross because Jesus takes our sins from us. Now something that's worked in our home for over a decade in the various ages of our children is something I learned from actually a business associate who kept talking about something, some of these things he was doing with his kids on family night. And I had never heard of it and so our oldest was five at the time. And I listened and I said, boy, I'm going to try that. And family nights is simply a time that you set apart one evening per week. Why do you set it apart one evening per week? Because then you'll get to it about every other week <laughs> in light of the schedule realities. And that's what happens for us. We don't feel guilty about it, but that's 26 impression opportunities that we get to have that wouldn't have been if it hadn't been on the schedule. And all it is is we, we play a theme song, and everyone knows the family night theme song. It's an upbeat song, and so that means you gather in the living room. It's family night time, which is the favorite time of the week. And we'll dance around somewhat crazy, and, and we'll take the younger kids, and we'll swing them up and down and throw them on the couch, hopefully hitting the couch, you know. And, um, there are other stories that I won't talk about in front of social services representatives. But we have a blast just getting in the mood for this is the great time. It's when we're going to deal with our faith as a family. We were having a bit of an issue with bickering. I don't know if you guys ever have that with your siblings. Yes. So we thought, we need to do a family night on this. So Kurt went and got toothpaste tubes and some plates. So he lines them up at the counter, and he gives them all a toothpaste tube, and he puts a plate in front of each one of them. And he pulls out his wallet, and he says, okay. Slams it down on the counter, and he says, okay, you guys, the first person to get all the toothpaste out of that tube gets a dollar. And they were like, yeah, how fun. And they start squeezing, you know, and our house smells like minty fresh, you know, and this is so fun. And so then they're squeezing, squeezing, and then Nicole gets it out. Yay, I won, you know, and she's all excited. I won. And they're thinking, okay, family night, that was fun, Dad. And he goes, no, 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 wait a minute. Okay, so then I pull out my wallet. I reach in for a $20 bill, slap it on the table. First one to get it back into the tube gets the $20. <laughs> And they were so excited. So he goes, okay, go. So we had given them some utensils, like a straw and a toothpick, and they're <laughs> shoving it in there, you know, trying to get it in. And they could not get it in, but he tried for like five minutes. He just let them have fun with it. It made a mess. And then he said, okay, time's up. And they're like, well, it's impossible. We can't get it back in. It's not possible. To, well, that's just like your tongue. Once words come out, there's no way to take them back in. And we looked quickly at the scripture. And then we went to our jingle, which was do it God's way, watch what you say. It's so that simple uh, and that messy at times, and there was a cleanup process. It can also be as, as basic as this. Uh, you know, I'm tired. I don't want to have to do a complicated family night, but it is that time. And so let's just go to ice cream. But before going to ice cream, here's what we're going to do. I walked to the top of the stairs. The kids and mom are down at the bottom of the stairs. And I said, listen, uh, you want to go to ice cream? If you can figure this one out, uh, we're going to go to ice cream together. All right? So I am God in heaven. I'm like God in heaven, and I want you where I am. I want you to be with me here. Now, you can't touch the stairs, and you can't touch the railing. Figure out how you're going to get up here. Well, some silence, some scratching of the head, some, this is impossible, Dad. How are we supposed to get up and, oh, wait a minute. And my oldest figures it out. He says, all right, Dad, I'm in. Come down the stairs. So I walk down the stairs. He gets on my back. Now carry me up the stairs. And we go to the top of the stairs. Two minutes, we talk about the fact that why did Christ have to come down to us to accomplish what we couldn't accomplish on our own? And that's what the gospel's about. Now, off to ice cream.